We poured blood, sweat, and movie references into the creation of our 9980XE Kingpin Edition CPU, which used the expert overclocker's sanding stones to grind down the CPU with near perfect flatness. This is useful for improving contact to LN2 pots under extreme cooling conditions, but can also flatten the cooler and remove unnecessary material in a way that improves ambient cooling capabilities. Today's testing looks at that aspect of things, trying to narrow down what kind of improvement a nearly perfectly lapped CPU can post. Before that, this video is brought to you by Be Quiet and its Straight Power 11 series power supplies. The Straight Power 11 PSUs ship from 450 watts up to 1000 watts, accommodating most of the gaming PC build requirements you'd encounter, and focuses on delivering a higher quality power supply that doesn't sacrifice on efficiency or stability. Noise is also a heavy point for the Straight Power 11, using a 135mm Silent Wings 3 fan that can spin as low as 200 RPM for quieter low load operation. Learn more at the link in the description below. This process will be discussing two things. With the lapping of the IHS, there's obviously an expectation that you potentially improve thermals, and it's from two different uh, aspects of the process. One of them is you're reducing the actual material between the die and the ultimate cooling solution. And ideally you want as few thermal interfaces as possible between the die and what's cooling it. So in a perfect world, what you do is direct die contact or even more perfect, you might just solder a cooling solution directly to the die. But that's not how reality works. So in reality, what we end up with is you could do a direct die, you would delit it and then you get a, a really fine uh, finely made direct die kit that has tight tolerances so that you don't accidentally crack the die and then you put the cooling solution on top of that. At that point you don't really need the liquid metal anymore because you're so close to the source of heat which is the silicon that has a high thermal conductivity, it's about 200 watts per meter kelvin, that you can use a thin layer of paste and you'll be in good shape. Now the uh, other thing here though is that you might expect an improvement in thermals from lapping a CPU IHS because it has now potentially leveled out the thickness of the IHS, or at least uh, the concavity of the IHS. So in our scenario, what we were dealing with was an IHS that appeared from working with cane pin on sanding it to be very uneven. In fact, there were three really tall points, and we have footage of that, where the IHS just took significantly longer to sand down than the rest of it. And I, I just realized I haven't mentioned all of this on the table. Uh, Cooler Master played a joke on us. We'll talk about this later. But anyway, so that's one of the bigger things is that if you have high core to core deltas, uh, there are kind of two main theories as to why that might be. And one of them is the IHS is imperfect to a point that the cooling material on one side is much thicker than on the other side of the IHS and that can create thermal gaps uh, or deltas that are large. And then the, the other theory is that internally under the IHS, there's a uh, thicker layer of solder than is truly necessary or something to that effect. So the real reason that people like Caden Penn laugh the IHS though is not to try and gain a couple of degrees or, or reduce temperature by a couple of degrees when you're cooling with ambient, when you're doing liquid cooling or something like that. It's just, it's, it's not what they're after. So what Caden Penn is after is improving the uh, contact between the LN2 pot and the IHS by flattening both of those surfaces so that they contact each other pretty directly and then he might even scuff it up a bit to improve some contact area, give some, some extra grip for the thermal paste to grab onto. And then the reason for that is to reduce the chance of the thermal paste cracking when it's under liquid nitrogen where you're going to be in the negatives. You might be minus 100 degrees Celsius or lower. So that's what he's going for, which is different from what a lot of people are trying to achieve when they lap the CPU for normal use. And what we're testing is what's the improvement in normal use? It's not going to be a ton. We've done this before, but now we're doing it with uh, a more perfect approach by using the sanding disks that Kinbin had. In reality, what we've done is prepare the CPU for better use with liquid nitrogen because we've flattened the surface. So the contact between the, the cooler, the Allen 2 pot and the IHS is less likely to a gap in a way that causes the paste to crack and require reheating it with a heat gun or just removing the pot and putting new Allen 2 or new paste on it for the next Allen 2 run. So that's really what's happened, but let's go through the test data and see if it's improved in any meaningful way for air cooling, by which we mean liquid cooling, but using ambient 
air. So we're not using any extreme cooling solutions here, just a Kraken X62 280 millimeter cooler. And then we'll have additional test bench details in the article linked in the description below. In our 4.4 gigahertz, 1.15 volt tests, a light overclock that can be reasonably cooled on the X62, we found our unmodified Intel i9-9980XE CPU to perform at 86 degrees Celsius for package temperature, with liquid temperature at 39 degrees and average core load temperature at 75 degrees Celsius. Note that ambient is logged for all tests. Ambient was controlled to 3 tenths of a degree for these tests, and as a refresher, deleting a 7980XE and adding liquid metal got it down to 67 degrees Celsius core and 74 degrees Celsius package. This is something we previously covered, but the advantage to the 7980XE is twofold. It's easier to delid, so cooling that is not subambient is improved with a reduced gap between the die and the IHS, and it's also using a thinner interface of liquid metal in this instance. There are downsides too, but as shown in some of our B-roll of the delitting process, the 7980XE CPUs are the same as the 9980XEs, except that the IHS is secured with paste and silicone rather than indium solder. So it's just silicone adhesive and thermal paste on that 7000 series. Once the silicone adhesive is removed, the die to IHS gap is reduced, and that's further improved when using two thin layers of liquid metal as the contact medium. The 9980XE, meanwhile, has potentially more distance between the die and the IHS as a result of the soldering process. This is why we see such large improvements on the 7980XE. We're reducing the distance and improving the interface, and that's really the benefit of it. Back to the chart, the 9980XE and the 7980XE really showed their gap when set to 4.6 GHz and 1.24 volts core, which is an awful Terrible configuration, but one which we use to artificially stress the CPU under ABX loads. That thermal delta is noticeable here. Going to our Kingpin tests, we see a reduction from the 9980XE's 86.2 degree baseline package temperature to 83.1 degrees in the final like-for-like -like test. We did some additional tests with newer thermal paste batches than the one we originally used for the pre-lap testing, finding performance falling within a single degree of variation for each one. The package temperature improved by about 2 to 3 degrees Celsius, depending on test, versus the baseline benchmark. This is a good improvement from just removing a layer of nickel and flattening the copper interface. We emailed experts Kingpin and Tin about this and received confirmation that a 2 degree reduction is common for CPU lapping, but we also received a lesson on the greater item of importance. A flatter interface for liquid nitrogen cooling solutions is really the reason that these CPUs get lapped. Tin told us the following, quote, while we hoped for more significant results, two degrees Celsius is quite usual. For us, the problem with non-flat CPUs lies in a different realm. When you get too much grease filling voids between the flat CPU Allen 2 pot and the curved IHS, it's more prone to crack and lose good thermal contact, making CPU overclocking on liquid nitrogen poor. With lapped flat CPU integrated heat spreaders and flat pot bases, this almost never happens, even when benching 18 cores at 6 GHz. By the way, with little CPUs, like 1151, this is a much worse issue due to high power density versus the area. We also previously discussed this with Joe Stefanzi, who pre-lapped all of his Allen 2 pots and CPUs before starting benchmarking. In our initial bench build, when we were working with Stefanzi on our LN2 efforts, we asked why the lapping was needed at all when working with liquid nitrogen, because at that point it seems like a couple of degrees is sort of a pointless reduction. The answer was the same. This can reduce the chance of paste cracking during testing and means that contact loss is less likely when under extreme temperatures with large sub-zero temperature swings. The end result is that our lapped 18-core CPU falls within expected range of what Kingpin and Tin see for the average temperature reduction just from lapping, but beyond that, the CPU is now more suitable for future liquid nitrogen overclocking as its surface is much flatter. And if you want to see our efforts with Joe previously, we have a video preparing and recapping for the live stream that we did with liquid nitrogen. But for smaller CPUs, like the normal KSQ desktop CPUs, the difference might be marginally higher than what we saw as a result of the increased power density in that tiny area. But overall, the real difference here is that the improvement is in a time reduction versus the manual sanding approach, which can take hours, and the thermal reduction being about the same versus a perfect manual lap. 
The big question now is whether we improved the core to core delta, because that's where we saw the worst performance in our original testing. For core to core delta, as we previously observed a max versus minimum core difference of about 39 degrees on the 9980XE, went under a stress test that pegged us to the maximum package temperature. It's about 104 degrees Celsius. More reasonably, under the 4.4 gigahertz and 1.15 volt overclocks, we were closer to a 30 degree delta. Across all of our 9980XE tests, this is about the same. Even the 7980XE only saw an improvement to 25 degrees core to core when we used liquid metal with these same tests. And that's exactly why we thought lapping would pose a bigger improvement, because that's the one thing we hadn't done to the 7980XE. But we didn't lap the 7980XE. So we don't get that comparison. We lapped the 9980XE, which means we're still dealing with an interface between the die and the IHS, which we haven't controlled. It was made at the factory. Disappointed with these results overall, we are now hypothesizing that this is potentially a matter of how the CPU was soldered or made, potentially indicating an issue under the IHS rather than with the IHS. Intel did not re-engineer its 9980XE IHS or substrate and dies. And so the processor is the same as the 7980XE, aside from some more process maturity and the solder change. It's possible that Intel has thicker solder than is required because the heat spreader is unchanged, for the most part, from when it was used for thermal paste. So solder would need to be at least as thick as thermal paste, or the thermal paste used, on the 7980XE to ensure contact between the die and the heat spreader. There are some minor changes in here, but the amount of changes for the 9980XE versus the 7980XE are not as significant as what you would typically see when going from paste to solder, like the changes we saw with the 9900K versus something like the 7700K. So overall, it's possible that the solder thickness is the next point of consideration, and for that, it gets tougher to test. Paste can be compressed, but solder can't reasonably be compressed in one of these CPUs. It's possible, yes, but you'd really have to cook it. The next thing we would have to do would be delitting the IHS that we just lapped, which would improve things further. But that'd be a lot of work for a CPU which is already perfect for liquid nitrogen overclocking and is functional for anything else, and is $2,000. And delitting these, is dangerous, something that Rowan demonstrated clearly when he attempted to delid his own 9980XE, and that's the delid king doing that. We didn't get the results that we were expecting to get for the core to core deltas. Everyone was expecting a much lower core to core delta because in the sanding process, you can clearly see that the die has leveled out and it is level. This is not an issue of uh, an imperfect sand. I mean, we had arguably the world's leading overclocker basically do it for us. So uh, it's, it's a, more or less a perfect lap. There's some imperfection toward the very outer edge, but that wouldn't cause any of the, the lack of improvement that we saw in core to core delta. So realistically, what we're left with is uh, a couple of different options. One of them is that potentially under the IHS, there's another problem that we can't see. And that might be something to do with the way the solder has been applied in theory. And this is just my own speculation. Uh, in theory, Intel didn't really change a whole lot for the IHS with the 9980XE versus the 7980XE. So this was not a, uh, the, the substrate's the same, the CPU is the same, so it wasn't re-engineered for solder. Maybe that is part of this, but we're not really sure. We can't speak to that. The 7980XE also had pretty large deltas core to core. So it gets a little tricky to figure out what's expected because uh, the one place we see this change is if we do direct die contact. And with direct die, we see those deltas on a 7980XE drop to about 10, maybe 12 degrees, instead of 25 degrees with liquid metal and an IHS. Now, the 7980XE is not the same as our 9980XE. So we still have variables there where with our 7980XE, we didn't lap the IHS, but we delitted it and put liquid metal on it. So we've We've removed the one variable that we're questioning on the 9980XE, but we have a variable that we've removed on the 9980XE, which means it's not a perfect comparison. So really, if we wanted to go crazy with this, the thing to do would be to next lap the 7980XE IHS, put the liquid metal back on it with no sealant, no, no glue to hold them together, and then see if that core to core delta really vanishes. Because at that point, You've eliminated the variable of the IHS. We could even 
if we wanted to risk it, we could delet our 99 DXE and swap it. So we've, we would have eliminated that variable. And then we would have eliminated the uh, consideration of the interface below the IHS and also the gap caused by the silicone adhesive. So that'd be what we'd really have to do at this point to try <laughs> these, these things, to try and find the difference or to try to eliminate the difference uh, for the core to core deltas. Another potential theory is that because a lot of these cold plates for liquid coolers are made with the expectation that they're going on a CPU, there are some some exclusions from that, but the expectation that they're going on the CPU might dictate that a lot of the cold plates for the liquid coolers on the market are also going to be uh, concave or convex to accommodate whatever CPU service they're trying to fit. And if that's the case, then that could also potentially introduce some of the thermal delta that we're seeing core to core, but that's um, not, not particularly it's not the biggest consideration. The biggest consideration we have is that solder under the IHS. That's what we think is more likely the issue. So uh, we'll see. It's, I mean, if there's an, a ton of interest, then we can laugh the 79 DXE. Maybe I can send it out to Canepin and ask him to do it for us, just that the IHS we have, and then test that again with a lapped IHS and liquid metal and no sealant and see what happens. If the deltas go down at that point, then we've found our issue on the 99 DXE in theory, would have been the interface between the two. Uh, if it doesn't go down, then there's something else at play, and maybe it's just normal, even if it's not particularly great. Um, we, our understanding is that this delta is on the higher end of things. And in working with Der Bauer previously, we learned that the uh, the core-to-core -core delta of something like a K-SKU desktop enthusiast CPU might be 20 degrees, and then direct dial bring you down closer to like 10 or something. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's looking like maybe the interface at this point. Either way, what we can take away from this is that a perfect lap on the IHS gets us about two to three degrees Celsius reduction. And speaking with cane pin and tin, this is expected and usual. So if you wanted an extra two to three degrees, that's what you can do to get it. And then the core to core delta is something that we need to investigate more. And we don't have a firm conclusion on what specifically is causing the large gaps in ours but they are consistent now and they've been, been seen between multiple runs including multiple uh, batches of thermal paste and even different thermal paste were able to reproduce this issue uh, and even some of the different coolers too so that's the big question mark now if there's a ton of interest we'll keep looking into it but um, this is this is getting to be pretty pretty low down at this point and not sure how many people care about this so if you really do care let us know that way we can take note of it and continue that's it for this one, though. Thank you for watching. Sorry if the results were disappointing to you for the core-to-core -core deltas, but we've learned a few important things, which is that there's a lot more to consider than the IHS. And also, this whole process, just to really reinforce this, is more about improving the contact for liquid nitrogen cooling, not really for ambient. So that's why Kanepin does it. Kanepin does it because if he uses the CPU as is, where it's got that slight curve in the IHS, then that causes problems with the thermal paste can crack, and then your liquid nitrogen uh, overclocking gets shut down temporarily while you either reapply the paste or try to heat it up and melt it and, and fix the, the, the issue. So that's really why he does it. Should you also lap your IHS? Well, it depends on do you want two to three degrees improvement if you're doing air cooling or liquid, as the case may be. So that's it for now. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more. You can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly or store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a shirt like this one. We'll see you all next time.